success. What is it? What do I need to do to achieve it? I'm a senior leader in a global management consultancy where I've specialized in large scale business transformation. And for most of my life, I had a secret which held me back. My secret is that I struggle with people. In fact, I seem to have a natural talent for rubbing people up the wrong way. <laughs> As a colleague recently commented, I may not be great at resolving conflict, but I sure am great at causing it. <laughs> and, well, my job, it's all about people. <laughs> and at first, it wasn't a big issue. I get occasional comments about being difficult, but I got on okay. I made my way from office administrator to software developer, and then management consultant. I started working on bigger projects. I even became a manager. I was going places. <laughs> but that people thing, it became a bit more important. And I started falling out with people. In fact, the fallouts were just becoming bigger. And I kept getting told I needed to change. And I wanted to, but I was stuck. This was new territory for me because for my whole life, it was head down, get on with the job. You see, at six, my father drowned, <laughs> saving my life. At 13, my mother had a breakdown, which meant I became a carer to her and my younger brother. To get through university, I worked three jobs to self-fund my way. I'd overcome all of that, but this people thing, <laughs> it made no sense. They made no sense. People are frustrating. And I have to tell you quite often, we're not on the same page. In fact, they just don't seem to get me. Even the therapists I went to for answers <laughs> didn't get me. And I fell out with most of them. <laughs> I was determined to change. I didn't want to be difficult. So I put myself on social boot camp. You name it, I tried it. Self-help books, training, life coaching. I even spent seven years, that's right, seven, decoding people. And I self-analyzed my interactions with other people, <coughs> even my friends. And I created a mental playbook of what to do and what not to do in different situations. It was exhausting. I was like a bumblebee trying to become a social butterfly. But there was no metamorphosis. In fact, I became crippled with anxiety. My career stalled and I almost gave up. And then in July 2017, I found my answer. I am autistic. And I learned this through helping my son. He's also autistic. He's just turned nine two days ago. And he was diagnosed a few months after starting school. Now, starting school, it's tough. For us, it was like nuclear fallout. In fact, it got so bad the school wanted him out. And I remember around the time of Chinese New Year, I got invited into his classroom and he showed me around. And he told me proudly, he was born in the year of the bull. And he thought that he made such a good bull because he was bad. 
and a bull could be bad. This was around the same time that the school told us they chose not to get involved with autism, it was too complex, and that they didn't think that it was the place for him. I spent 18 months fighting to get him the help that he needed, and we lost that battle so many times. He was moved on from that school, and just a few months later, he was moved on from the school after that. In fact, three schools by the age of six. It was tough. It was heartbreaking. Because I can tell you, there are no words to tell a five-year-old that his school doesn't want him anymore. But my bulldog spirit, it paid off. And he's now in a place where he's supported, and he believes autism is his superpower. Something that he reminds me of on a very <laughs> regular basis. And just a few months ago, he came home having received the Cooperation Cup. And I can't tell you how proud I was he taught me what it means to be successful by being true to yourself. He showed me the power that can happen when you are supported in an environment to help you succeed. The day that I was diagnosed, I cried. Something I'm trying not to do right now. <laughs> I cried for the years of struggling, for the years of thinking that I was unlikable that I wasn't enough, that I didn't have what it takes to be successful. And the day I was diagnosed, it changed everything. I realized I'm not difficult, I'm different. Yes, I'm a great source of conflict, but you know what? My teams, they're never gonna struggle with groupthink. <laughs> because I'm not difficult, I'm different. And companies looking to be disruptive, <laughs> here I am, disruption's my middle name. I see the big picture and I push people to develop their ideas further. I make them better because I am not difficult, I am different. I am loyal, I am hardworking, and I see things from a different perspective because I'm not difficult, I am different. And there is a value in my difference. I don't have to hide my secret. And so I told people, I told my CEO, the head of HR, my clients, my team, and I took that playbook and I gave it to the most sociable person in my team. I was a great management consultant because I'd outsourced my sociability. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I changed things so that I could be valued. And I wanted other people to be valued too. People who are autistic, dyslexic, dyspraxic, people who have ADHD, bipolar, OCD, people with neurodevelopmental differences. You see, we are neurodivergent. It means our brains, well, they're wired a little differently. It's genetic, part of our diversity, our neurodiversity. And I can tell you that at least one in 10 people are neurodivergent. And yes, we think differently. In fact, I like to think we have a natural advantage in thinking differently. And as I look across the room, if they'd put in the missing two seats, right, that would be one person at each table. And for the other nine in 10, well, it means you're gonna know someone, a family member, a friend, hey, perhaps even a difficult colleague. 
And I can tell you that one in 10, they're not difficult, they're different. <laughs> um, and there is a value, they are to be valued. And this is a value I've seen in my own family. My mum, after years of struggling, was diagnosed as bipolar. And with the right support, she's gone on to start her own business. And she's working around the highs and the lows. My son, well, he now spends his days thinking about his future inventions and has so many money-making ideas. In fact, he's currently paying his dad five pounds a week to code him a website so he can sell his spare Yu-Gi-Oh Yu cards online. <laughs> this is money that he earns by doing odd jobs around the house. He's even tried getting his sister in on the employee share scheme. <laughs> and as for me, I got that promotion that I almost gave up on. But too many of the one in 10 are battling. When I talk to the neurodivergent, the words they often use to describe their experiences and how they feel are broken, stupid, weird, outsiders, difficult, because this is what the world has told them. But they're not difficult. They are different. And they are to be valued. I founded Me Decoded for the neurodivergence as a platform so that they can share their ideas and their insights to bring their value into the world. Because the benefit of neurodivergent thinking includes things like increased productivity, innovation, creativity, which is why GCHQ got in on the action, and we know they know a thing or two. <laughs> and it's not just about them, other companies as well, SAP, Microsoft, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, and the list goes on. I want my son to be valued, to go on, to be educated, to be employed, and to have a chance of bringing his money-making and innovation ideas to life. But things need to change. We need environments in which the one in 10 are empowered to succeed. We're, we're open to new ways of working so that the one in 10 are not faced with barriers in a world that doesn't stop to think about them. And our schools, our universities, our workplaces and society. And I know some of these changes are big, but many of them are small. And we can start right now, because it starts with thinking and focusing on the positives and what's possible. And I know it works. It works for me. Or well, it did work. It still does. Um, I am a senior leader in a global management consultancy. I lead teams to achieve large-scale business transformational change. I'm not difficult. I'm different and I am valued. And this is something that I want for everyone, which is why I'm standing here today for the one in 10, for my mum and for my son. We are not difficult, we are different, and we are valuable. And I believe that together, we can make the changes needed so that this value can be realised. And it isn't just for the one in 10, it's for everyone, because I believe that everyone can benefit from the power of neurodivergent thinking. Thank you.